this and there's many different variations of it. Each country has their own different fillings. The one we're going for today is nice and simple. The main ingredients are of course our chicken and our shawarma spices. Then we're going to be making tum. It's a very heavy garlic sauce. It really brings this all together and completes the dish. Then the bread I'm using today is Lebanese bread, but you can also use sage or pita. Let's get straight into it. Now the chicken that we're using today is one kilo or 2.2 pounds of chicken thigh. This is boneless and skinless and you can use chicken breast if you wanted to, but thigh has so much more moisture and it cooks way better in dishes like this. All we're doing for this is thinly slicing it into nice strips. Make sure they are the same size, that way they'll cook at the same rate. And once you have it sliced, place it into a bowl. Also, there is people out there that say don't cut raw meat on wooden boards, but you're never going to guess what you do after you use it. You clean it. Now with the chicken in the bowl, we want to add two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of ground cumin and ground coriander, one teaspoon of smoked paprika and turmeric, one teaspoon of ground allspice, half a teaspoon of ground cardamom, half a teaspoon of ground cloves and cayenne pepper, and half a teaspoon of ground ginger. Make sure you season to taste with salt and ground white pepper. And I should probably mention that season to taste doesn't mean literally taste it, it means to your preference. Once the spices are in, we're going to grate in five cloves of garlic to create a paste. You can also roughly chop this if you wanted to, but paste does get a better flavor out of this. Make sure you scrape it all in there so there's no waste. Then we can slice one lemon in half and use a citrus juicer or your hand to extract the juice. Just make sure that there's no seeds decide to hop in as well. Add the juice into the chicken, then follow that up with one tablespoon or 20 milliliters of white vinegar and both of those acids help tenderize the chicken. Add in one cup or 250 grams of natural Greek yogurt. This also helps tenderize the chicken and makes it juicy and it's a gentle and effective way to tenderize meat. Add in three tablespoons or 45 grams of concentrated tomato paste. This adds depth, nice color, and a really nice concentrated flavor. Add in one tablespoon of olive oil or 20 milliliters. Then mix this all together using a spatula or your hands, whatever's easiest for you. And what you should have is a nice golden color and the marinade is completely mixed through. This can then be wrapped up and stored in the fridge for up to 48 hours at this point. Or if you're like me and I'm doing a video so I wanna make it now, I'm just gonna use it straight away. In the meantime, we can get our blender out and we're going to be making tum, which is our garlic sauce. So into a blender bowl, add 30 cloves of peeled garlic. I know that's a lot of garlic, but this is what makes this sauce so special. Also add in a big pinch of sea salt flakes. This is obviously going to season and also help as an abrasive to break down our garlic. Then what we wanna do is blitz this on high speed for a few different times, scraping down the bowl in between until that garlic has become nice and pasty. We don't want it to be thick and chunky. We do want it to be kind of broken down a little bit. And if it doesn't break down too much, what you can do is add a splash of the sunflower oil that we're using, roughly about one tablespoon's worth, just to add a little bit of moisture in there. This is going to help break down that garlic and turn it into a paste, which is what we need to start off our tomb. Now with our blender running on a high speed, what we're going to do is get 500 milliliters of sunflower oil and very, very slowly pour this in whilst that's on a high speed. This is going to emulsify it and create that nice thick sauce that Tum is. I can't stress enough though, you really need to pour this in extremely slowly. It does take a while. And if you start seeing oil pouring up on top of the Tum, just stop, let it all completely mix in before you start adding any more. Otherwise you'll end up splitting the sauce and then you'll have to start all over again. Nobody wants to be doing that, especially when you have to peel 30 cloves of garlic now it is a good idea to stop once you've added in about half of the oil just to give it a mix around manually with a spatula make sure everything's going all right and then we're going to continue going with the high speed and then slowly add that oil back in and it's the same process as last time just do it nice and slowly patience is key here we don't want to overwork it after adding about two thirds of the oil, you'll notice that the tum is becoming stable. It's emulsified really well. What we're going to do now is alternate between lemon juice and the oil. And the amount of lemon juice I have here is from one lemon, which is roughly about 45 to 50 milliliters. When you add the lemon juice, you'll notice that the tum will really start to fluff up, become nice and puffy and aerated. This is what the acidity will do. And we're not going to add all of it in right now. We're going to add about half and continue alternating between the oil and the lemon juice until both have completely been added in. If you notice that your tum is getting extremely thick, you might not need all of the oil, but make sure you do add all of that lemon juice in there for the acidity. It really does balance out the flavors and adds a nice acidic touch. Now, once you have all of that added in, what we can do is just make sure everything is completely incorporated before we can turn this off. Double check it for seasoning, adjust if necessary with salt. You can also add a bit of ground white pepper in there. Then we can transfer this into a bowl or you can leave it in the blender bowl to save dishes. But that right there is our garlic tum and we can store this in the fridge until we're ready to serve. As I said in the intro, different cultures have different fillings and different variations of this dish. The version that I'm doing has thinly sliced pickles. If you don't like pickles, just leave it out and you can add all sorts of different things to this to make it your own. 
Now when you're ready to cook, place a large pan over a high heat, get this nice and hot, then we can add in our chicken along with all of the marinade, depending on how long you decided to marinate it for. Like I said, I just used mine straight away, but up to 48 hours is best. You may also be wondering why I didn't add oil to the pan. It's because there's oil already in the chicken marinade, but you're more than welcome to add a little bit in there. And depending on the size of your pan, you may need to do this in batches just so we don't overcrowd the pan and steam the chicken. Once you have the chicken in, spread it out so it's not sitting on top of one another. And then I like to let this sit for about three to four minutes to build a crust before we start mixing it around. And then you'll notice once you do start mixing it, it does have that nice golden color on the chicken. I am going to repeat that process two more times. So the total cooking time for this chicken is nine minutes. But let it sit, let that flavor and crust develop and we don't need to play with it too much. Now after nine minutes, turn this off the heat and what I'm doing right now is a little bit overkill but in that container there is some oil and what I'm doing here is lighting up a charcoal brick and this is going to imitate that flavor, that smokiness that you would get over coals. Obviously it's not going to be the exact same but it is a good thing to do for your house. Once that brick's hot, add it into the oil then immediately cover it with the lid. We're only going to do this for a couple of minutes just to allow that smokiness to go onto the chicken. Like I said, the pan is off so nothing is cooking here. Obviously the heat in the pan is still going to add the heat to the chicken. And once you have all of that done, transfer the chicken into a bowl and leave a little bit of the flavor behind in the pan because we're going to be using it for the next step. This is also optional, but place that pan back over a medium heat. Add in the tiniest splash of olive oil, then we can get our wraps. Spread it around in that pan, pick up all of the flavor that was left behind from the chicken and the marinade, and then toast our wraps for a couple of minutes until they're done to your liking. Turn this off the heat, then we're going to get our tum out. Just a couple of tablespoons, spread it around the whole wrap as much as you like. Just remember it is extremely strong with garlic. Place down the chicken, a generous amount will do. This will easily make six wraps. And then top with those thinly sliced pickles if you're using them, of course, or whichever fillings you decided to use. Let's then get this out of the pan. It's nice and warm, it's crispy, it's lightly toasted. And you can wrap these however you like. Most people wrap them like a burrito, closing in both ends. These wraps were a little bit difficult to do, so I kind of made a bit of a mess. But you know what? It wrapped up in the end perfectly fine. And if you are worried about presentation, you can wrap them in some food wrap or even foil just to hold their shape a bit better. And a good way for them to hold their shape even more is to lightly toast them the whole way around, especially on that seam. That way it will lock it all in. Once you have everything done, we can then slice it. You can even do it straight or on an angle if you want to be a little bit fancy. To reveal that center with the juicy chicken, the marinade is perfect, the pickles add acidity, and of course the garlic tum to bring it all together. Before we get stuck in, a personal preference is to add a little bit more tum on top. It's going to give you a bit more garlic breath, but there is only one thing left to do, and that is of course we can then dig in. <laughs> 